October 20th, 2552, was a pivotal day. It just so happens to be the day that we pick up the story of Halo 2. It was the day that Master Chief received his Mjolnir Mark VI powered assault armor aboard the orbital defense platform Cairo. Shortly thereafter, he would attend an award ceremony alongside Commander Miranda Keyes, accepting a posthumous award for her father, Captain Jacob Keyes, and Sergeant Major Avery J. Johnson. This award ceremony was unfortunately cut short with the arrival of Regret's fleet, just outside of the kill zone for the orbital defense grid in orbit around Earth. What happens next is a matter of public record. The Covenant deployed tick boarding craft, overran much of the orbital defense grid, took down Cairo's battle group sister platforms, the Atlas and the Malta, and planned to do the same for the Cairo, in so doing blowing a hole large enough in the orbital defense grid for Regret's carrier to descend to Earth's surface to begin the battle of New Mombasa. All the while, the remainder of Regret's fleet remained in orbit and battled against the UNSC's home fleet. This date, October 20th, marks the day that humanity's home system and our home world was under direct threat from the Covenant. It was the day that the secret location of our home was revealed. But what if I told you that just 10 days earlier, humanity's home world was found by a different group with no association or affiliation with the Covenant or, as far as we can tell, humanity. And what if I told you that the engagement that followed was so significant and yet so downplayed and shrouded in mystery that we should perhaps be looking at this particular engagement for the next big threat towards humanity? Roll the intro. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and today we're going to recap an engagement that is shrouded in mystery that happened 10 days before the events of Halo 2. Now, as we well know, around this time, the Prophet of Regret was discovering and decrypting a forerunner luminary found on the world of Meridian, within which the navigational information that led to the Ark portal that would ferry Regret and his fleet to the Ark, where the sacred rings could be ignited and the great journey begin. But in so revealing the location of the Ark portal, so humanity's homeworld was also revealed. Now it is very reasonable to assume here that the Prophet of Gret had no idea whatsoever that this planet was humanity's homeworld, hence the arrival of the fleet of sacred consecration at Earth's doorstep a fleet that composed of only 15 Covenant capital ships, nowhere near a large enough fleet to take down humanity's homeworld in a similar manner as colonies so far discovered by the Covenant. And of course, when the fleet of Sacred Consecration did arrive in humanity's home system, they were immediately confronted by the UNSC's home fleet, which itself was actually made up of numerous large UNSC fleets, most namely the second 3rd, 5th, 7th, and 16th fleets, in total composing a fleet size of hundreds of ships. But our particular interest in this narrows in on the 3rd fleet, and winds the clock back 10 days before Regret attacked Earth. Now each fleet within the UNSC's navy is made up of large quantities of ships that are independently grouped together into battle groups. In similar manner to modern-day Navy battle groups, UNSC battle groups are most often made up of a single carrier, two cruisers, and either three destroyers or three frigates, and occasionally a single auxiliary ship. Battle Group Rhino was no exception to this, with her lead ship being the UNSC carrier Totem Lake. And October the 10th started as another ordinary day for Battle Group Rhino, whose duties included, but were not limited to, patrolling the Sol system, 
engaging any would-be incursions into humanity's home system, mounting defensive or offensive action against adversarial forces, performing frequent subspace scans to ensure there were no inbound vectors of slipspace bound incursion vessels, and frequently reporting in with fleet command, with any incidents, engagements or anomalous artefacts being reported as a point of priority. Whilst performing their duties in the vicinity of Saturn, Battlegroup Rhino made long-range sensor contact with an anomalous object or objects near Enceladus, the sixth largest natural satellite in orbit around Saturn, with Battlegroup Rhino adjusting their patrol vector to bring them closer to Enceladus. Upon approaching the icy moon, the group detected 12 unidentified large vessels in space nearby Enceladus. They were holding position and broadcasting seemingly outdated civilian IFF transponder codes. IFF, or Identify Friend or Foe codes, are signal transponders that are peer-to-peer -peer encrypted and securely transmuted between known vessels. A smaller, individual application version of this with all of the UNSC's military. Every soldier at enlistment is given an IFF transponder within a neural chip in the base of their skull for the sole purpose of monitoring vital signs and broadcasting the IFF transponder signal to allies nearby so that friends can be easily identified in the fog of war. Shipborne IFFs serve exactly the same purpose, validating that ships that are too distant to be seen with the naked eye are in fact friendly vessels, and if the ship either doesn't emit an IFF code of known origin or within acceptable date stamps, it is by definition designated as a foe until proven otherwise. At the distance that these 12 unidentified large vessels were discovered, and IFFs seemingly confirmed to just be outdated civilian IFF codes, Battlegroup Rhino were too distant to visually identify the vessels as being human in origin. Thus, standard procedure in this situation necessitated that distance be closed to the unidentified vessels so that both visual identity could be confirmed and to provide the unidentified vessels opportunity to open communications with the UNSC battle group to verify their identity and their allegiances. This likely being a hard-earned truth in regards to how the UNSC approach unidentified vessels in that surely at some point or another, the UNSC have engaged and destroyed vessels that simply had outdated IFF transponder codes and actually posed no threat whatsoever. Battlegroup Rhino approached the 12 unidentified vessels. However, as they entered visual range, 11 of the 12 unidentified vessels made immediate unauthorized slip space transits away from the Sol system leaving one ship behind. At this point, a different set of regulations then came into effect, due in part to the ongoing war with the Covenant, and these regulations made very clear what to do next. Pursuant to standing orders, any vessel not positively identified as friendly must be engaged immediately, and as no attempts of communication had been made, at this point, the course of action was clear. Battlegroup Rhino, composed of three frigates or destroyers, two cruisers, and the lead UNSC carrier Totem Lake, a battlegroup numbering some 7,500 personnel and possessing gigatons worth of destructive capability, were to engage this sole, unidentified vessel with extreme prejudice. But what happened next defies explanation. Battlegroup Rhino began engaging the one remaining unidentified vessel. And this is when information gets significantly sparse. The unidentified vessel retaliated and directed its attention to the lead ship of Battlegroup Rhino, the UNSC Totem Lake. And whatever it did, it caused the remaining vessels within Battlegroup Rhino to go into full retreat. The carrier Totem Lake was lost with all hands after reportedly suffering multiple hull breaches and numerous boarding parties. 
the remainder of Battlegroup Rhino fully disengaged combat with the unidentified vessel and went into full retreat until they were in orbit above Enceladus. At this point, the now de facto commander of Battlegroup Rhino, Captain W. Murray, would report the incident through to the commander of the Third Fleet, of which Battlegroup Rhino hails. Vice Admiral Williams received this incident report, and then immediately requested permission from Fleet Admiral Harper to re-engage the unidentified ship, likely with reinforcements. But permission was denied, as the Master Chief had since returned to Earth, and brought with him information regarding an impending attack on humanity's homeworld that he and others had valiantly prevented from taking place, but that ultimately, humanity's homeworld was now known to the Covenant, and they would be coming. However, in spite of October 20th being widely accepted as the day that humanity's home system and homeworld was discovered by an alien race for the first time, one has to wonder if these unidentified large vessels carrying seemingly outdated civilian IFF transponder codes were actually human at all, particularly given that a single vessel remained behind as the other 11 retreated and caused the absolute and entire loss of an immensely powerful UNSC carrier and caused the rest of a battle group to fall away in retreat, seemingly entirely unaffected by the engagement as there was intention to return and re-engage. Were these unidentified vessels human at all? Or were they an as of yet unidentified alien species with vessels that were more technologically advanced than anything humanity had thus far seen? The only thing that we can be sure of is that whatever they were, they were extremely dangerous, and we likely haven't seen the last of them. Battlegroup Rhino, minus her carrier, would thus be reassigned to the home fleet and the defense of Earth, and a mere 10 days later would engage Regret's fleet above Earth that would quickly roll into numerous following conflicts that would last until the end of the war and the loss of the UNSC Totem Lake wasn't widely reported or known about. The 12 unidentified vessels remain unidentified, and just what took place between the one remaining unidentified vessel and Battlegroup Rhino remains, for now, a mystery. And until next time... Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. Big shout out to my patrons Spartan10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element Zero, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil my diligent sub-monitors, my fleet of strato-sentinels, and my loyal enforcers. And all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel, it means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir, and Born Stella and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know. And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos, and consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>